I'm going to talk this morning about considerations around the type of data that we get from district hospitals in Kenya and our thinking around methods for analysis of this type of data. Basically, the first, I'll structure the presentation in two parts. The first part will just try to present in a conceptual way the type of data we have, and the second part will try to tie in the type of quantitative analysis we do and the focus of the presentations today, which is qualitative data analysis. So multi-level modeling or multi-level methods. What are multi-level data? Multi-level data basically describes a structuring within data sets that are, are generated from routine uh, health information systems in that if you look at the structure of the data, data uh, can be structured into three levels such that you collect data at the hospital level, but there's relatedness in data at clinician level and patient level such that patients who are seen by a given clinicians are more likely to have similar observations. And clinicians within a given hospital tend to have more or less the same type of, uh, the, to generate more or less the same type of data. So looking at the first level of structure of hierarchical data that we deal with, our patients basically are nested within clinicians and that has interesting implications in terms of the methods you use for analysis. So for example, if you consider these as observations which are generated from patients seen by a single clinician, then these observations will tend to vary around an average for that specific clinician such that if the last bar there represents a patient on whom the clinician gets things right most of the time, and this bar here represents a clinician on whom, a patient, sorry, on whom the clinician rarely gets things right, then there'll be some variation, and all this will tend to center around the average number of times that a clinician gets things right. If you move to the next level of the hospital, the same is true once again, that at the hospital there'll be an average for how well clinicians within that hospital perform, and the performance of individual clinicians will again tend to vary around this mean for the hospital. The same happens again when you generate a data set which represents data collected from different hospitals. There'll be an overall mean for let's say 10 or 20 hospitals and all those means will be distributed around the overall performance in terms of uh, all the hospitals. So the traditional type of quantitative analysis which are mostly used to analyze health system data tend to quantify how much the observation you get from an, an individual patient vary from the total grand mean of your data. Now, multi-level methods allow you to break down this variation into different components and quantify how much variation is in terms of what you see in all the data in the health information systems and break that down into a hospital-specific variation clinician-specific variation, and a residual variation at the patient level, which you can't explain even after accounting for hospital effect and clinician effects. In addition to that, these methods provide some additional benefit, which is that usually when you measure an observation at the very basic level down here, and you are interested in explaining an outcome, you can explain this outcome in terms of the attribute of the patient. But some of the outcomes that you are interested in are affected by factors above the patient level or at the hospital level. So for instance, if we want to determine whether clinicians adhere to guidelines in terms of testing of children, let's say for a condition like malaria, and the requirement is that all children suspected to have malaria should have a positive test before treatment, the adherence to this recommendation will depend on hospital level factors like functioning of the laboratory and such things. Now, multi-level met methods will allow us to adjust for those factors measured at hospital level, in this particular case represented by Z, 
in the analysis of individual level factors. So, I go to an application of these methods in work that we have previously done. Previously, we conducted a study within eight Kenyan hospitals and basically compared an intervention uh, around introduction of clinical guidelines, which Grace talked about extensively in the morning, but now not at the national hospital, but at district hospitals. And we had a set of, of intervention hospitals and a set of control hospitals, and we wanted to determine whether introduction of these guidelines impacted on patient outcomes. These methods allowed us to adjust for hospital level factors and also consider analysis adjusting for uh, clinician observations. From these uh, studies, we were able to generate interesting data which we used for the analysis and which subsequently have helped us to answer questions which were not part of the primary uh, objective, like what is the effect of the clinician on quality of care that is delivered to an individual patient? How does the hospital within which a patient is receiving care impact on the quality of care? And also, how does the quality of care delivered within hospitals vary over time? I'll just take you through one bit of analysis that we've done, and these are basically the three most common conditions for which children get admitted to Kenyan hospitals. As a basic requirement of clinical guidelines, there are a set of signs for each condition that are required to be documented in clinical records for all admissions. Now, some of these signs, especially those in the first two columns, are just basically signs of the severity of illness and therefore are common across conditions. So out of a total of like 18 signs, these two signs are, are shared and therefore a child who is ill with all the three illnesses is required to have documentation of 16 signs. And in a case where a clinician does not document any sign, then we end up with a score of zero. So we could start using this as a measure of how well clinicians are performing in terms of managing patients. Now, the data we generated from the study that I've just talked about was from eight hospitals. Four hospitals were in the intervention arm, four in the control arm. We had a total of 700 clinicians within these eight hospitals, and during our study period, they saw up to 12,000 patients. So you can start appreciating the structure of data that I was talking about, uh, looking at a cross-section or a point in time, then that would represent data from one hospital, a single clinician who sees several patients within that hospital. Now, it's possible also from the design of our study to get measurements at different, times in, uh, at different points in times, up to six time points, when we evaluated quality of care at both the same hospitals and also at the eight different hospitals. I'll just share a bit of the results with you before telling you about our current thoughts on how qualitative analysis can enhance uh, the quantitative analysis that we've conducted to date. So these are the performance in terms of clinician assessment of the three most common illnesses at baseline, that is before intervention was implemented. And you can see that basically performance in terms of documenting the recommended clinical signs was poor. Now we use uh, the, the individual signs for individual patients with different conditions to generate an average assessment score, which in this case varies from around 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, with 0 0.4 meaning that uh, for in that hospital on average, clinicians re re uh, documented 44% of the signs that they were required to document. That is an output from a random effect model, which is a type of multilevel uh, regression model, which accounts for the structured nature of our data. And at the bottom, you can see the variances that I was talking about. 
at the hospital level and at the health worker level. So you can see that the variance at the hospital level is less than the variance <coughs> at the health worker level, meaning that most of the variation in care that we see within hospitals is basically explained by the health worker as opposed to the hospital. Uh, there's also some residual variants which I've not presented here, which means that after we explain variation in care at the hospital and health worker level, up to half of the variation in quality of care remains unexplained and is at the individual patient level. Uh, just a quick interpretation of the output is that in terms of time represented by the row for time post-intervention, you can see some negative coefficient, meaning that clinician performance in terms of quality of, of care or performing the tasks that they are required to perform declines with time. And that is after the intervention that we implemented in terms of training. So in the period post-training, then the effect of the intervention reduces with the time. And where you can see an asterisk, that's a test for an interaction between the implementation of the intervention and time, which means basically the simple interpretation would be that the rate of decline in performance of clinicians post-intervention varies within our facilities. So that is interesting because it shows something at the hospital level in terms of performance. So I'll just summarize that by tying up what I presented with the type of qualitative analysis that we are considering at this point. We see that there's a substantial part of variation in care up to 50%, which is explained by hospital level factors and clinician level factors. Now, when you're using quantitative methods, it becomes very difficult to pick out what these hospital level factors or the clinician level factors that influence uh, performance in terms of delivery of care are. So you start asking questions like, uh, what factors would, uh, uh, would account for the differences in performance of clinicians who are working within the same environment, having the same resources and everything? That's a pretty difficult question to answer using quantitative methods. So those are the type of things that we've started exploring using qualitative type of analysis. Additionally, at the hospital level, you'd be interested in questions like, what specific factors explain this type of variation that uh, is being explained by a given hospital X uh, compared to the other hospitals? And those are also questions that we are pursuing using qualitative methods. <coughs> so in summary, those are the ways in which we can summarize the analysis that we've done quantitatively so far. But in addition to that, there is a need to continue exploring this data in terms of using qualitative methods which can help us, which can complement the type of quantitative methods that we've done so far. Thank you.